There's something that pisses me off about a lot of writers, or people who call themselves writers, and I'm going to try to explain it to you today. My name's Autumn Chu. I used to be an English major before I uh, graduated from university, so I'm a former English major. I really like writing. I really like reading. I've read tons and tons of books over the years. Um, I've written plenty of my own as well, which maybe you'll see someday. I don't know. But there is something that really pisses me off about writers and people who call themselves writers but don't actually write that much. Before I get into this, I just want to say I don't like hate any of the people who are like this. Um, if you see yourself in this video, I don't hate you. It's nothing personal. It's just that I care really, really deeply about my craft as a writer, and I just want to impart the same level of passion and understanding that I have onto you. So don't take this personally. Um, I'm sorry. It's going to sound kind of harsh, but I'm doing it so that we can all learn together. All right? All right. Great. So part one of this video is writing is not world building. Okay, let's just get this straight. Writing is not world building. When I was in college, I had a roommate who told me that she was really into writing uh, and writing fiction. And I was really excited about this because I'm also a writer. I like writing fiction. And I asked her to tell me a little bit about her writing and what she does. And basically what we ended up doing was having a 30 minute conversation about the system of magic that her world uses. And I don't remember like that much about it at all. It was just like, oh, here's like light magic and dark magic and earth magic and wind magic and shit like that. And and the whole time we were talking, I was trying to figure out like, okay, what do your characters do? What's the plot of the story going to be and stuff like that. Uh, and she wasn't having any of it. She was just like, oh, I don't think about that kind of thing. I'm just, I just like tinkering with the magic systems or whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. And in my head, I was going, then you're not a fucking writer. You have not written a word on a page, okay? Writing is not world building. Let's get this straight. If you want to write a book, you need three things. You need a setting, which is where the story takes place. You need characters who are the people that you relate to in the story. I need a plot, which are the things the character does. If you only do world building, you only have a setting. You do not have a story. You have a third of a story, okay? You need the characters and you need the plot to make this shit work, all right? And I think the reason why this misconception is so widespread is because a lot of the times elements of the setting are what people remember the most from their stories. So for example, take Harry Potter. Harry Potter is a story that has a really, really excellent setting, actually. Uh, Hogwarts is obviously this amazing place to uh, fantasize about living in. You have the house system, so people love talking about like what house they're going to be in and stuff like that. The spells are really cool. They have like these quirky names. They do funny different things, like here's the one that makes things fly, here's the ones that petrifies people and stuff like that. I love Harry Potter, even though I'm trans and I'm not supposed to anymore, but uh, the first three books hold up, I think. But yeah, Harry Potter is a really great example of a story that has a really, really excellent setting. However, what makes Harry Potter work isn't just the fact that you have this magical world that you want to live in. The setting is not the only part of Harry Potter. The characters in the plot are also really, really important. Anyone who's read Harry Potter can tell you the plot of the first of all of the books um, and make it sound really compelling. First book, Harry Potter needs to find a stone that makes you immortal that his arch enemy Lord Voldemort is trying to find. That's good. That's just a plot that you can get your head around and everything centers around that. Every scene of the book is in some way structured to bring you to that final confrontation between Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort. Book two, the um, the Chamber of Secrets. The Chambers of Secrets, The I mean, it's right there in the title. What the fuck is the Chamber of Secrets? I want to find out. I want to learn more about this. The reason why Harry Potter works is in part because of these excellent plot elements that kind of drive you forward. And finally, you also need characters to make a story. And the characters of Harry Potter are also really compelling. Um, I think one of my favorite parts of Harry Potter is the really early scene where Harry and Ron are like shit talking Hermione basically because they just had some kind of argument and they were like, oh, you know, girls, so icky or whatever. And then Hermione is behind them and overhears them and like pushes past them in you know, like a big huff. And it's like, it's this character moment of like these two like young boys realizing like, oh shit, what we say has consequences. Our words have consequences and we hurt someone that's really close to us because she heard us talking about this. And later on, they redeem themselves when they like, you know, fight the troll. You, you probably remember the scene. But when they fight the troll and they save Hermione from it, then, you know, everything's forgiven and whatever. But these people have like grown as individuals as a result of these two interactions. And that's really what you read stories for. You read stories to see how characters develop and learn over time. Another really good example, I think, is Naruto. Uh, so Naruto, of course, is an anime that's super, super popular um, and also has a really compelling setting. So there's like the different villages and then there's the hidden leaf village that Naruto is from. And then 
there's another village that I don't know because I haven't seen Naruto. But uh, you can get yourself really immersed in the world of Naruto. You can like fantasize about what it's going to be like to be a ninja. You can do the stupid like run or whatever. But the reason why you not we, the reason why you watch Naruto is not because of the villages and because of the different techniques and stuff. Really, what you're there for is to watch the story arc of Naruto and his friends as they become better and better ninjas and become more mature people in the world. And I guess also violence is cool if you're into that sort of thing. But yeah, so Naruto is another really great example of how you need all three elements. You need characters, plot, and setting. You can't just have setting. That's not a book. That's a third of a book at best. So uh, if you want a really interesting case study in why uh, just setting doesn't work, there's a short story that I think you should read. It's only a few pages long. It's called The Library of Babel. The Wikipedia page, uh, basically, it is a short story about... Um, a library that has all possible combinations of characters and letters uh, in a certain language that they speak. And the idea is like, oh, so all possible human information exists in this library because it's every single possible combination of letters and character and whatever you understand. But because it's every single combination, it's also kind of useless because you have to sort through every single combination in order to like get anywhere with that. And that's a really, really interesting concept, right? The problem is that nothing fucking happens in this fucking book that I dislike. Um, so you can actually download this book off of the internet. This is making my eyes hurt. I hate white on black, uh, or black on white. But, um, so I just googled Library of Babel and literally like the second link, uh, sites.evergreen.edu apparently. You just click on it and you get to download it. Don't read this. Um, uh, yeah, and so you can just get the text of this book and read it. It is eight pages long, so, you know, hopefully you can tolerate reading eight pages. But if you'll read it, you'll understand what I mean. It's eight pages that's just describing the setting. It's just describing, okay, we're, here's like how this library works. Here's the different groups that are in the library and stuff like that. And I hate this so much because if you look over here, collected fictions, this is not fiction, okay? This is world building. This is a, a guy describing a world and a hypothesis that he thinks is interesting. No characters, no plot to speak of. It's just description, okay? Okay, and you, if you read it, you'll understand what I mean. You'll be like, okay, this is interesting, but when does something happen? When does something actually like work in the story? It doesn't, spoiler alert, but if you go on AO3 and if you talk to these quote unquote writers, you're going to see variations of this over and over again of people who are just interested in building these like elaborate worlds and settings, but never have a fucking character or a plot to speak of to actually build the story around. All right, what was I going to, what was the next thing? So. God, that's so bright. So, what should you do instead? If you are watching this video and you've made it this far and you're thinking to yourself, damn, I do that. I world build all the time and I don't have anything else to go around. Um, how do I improve as a writer? How do I become better? First of all, I'm sorry I was so mean to you. Um, that's just the way I am. I love you. Let's both do better together, all right? Second, if you want to do better, what you need is to understand all three elements. You need to pick something. It doesn't really matter what it is. You can pick anything. Um, but you need all three elements, setting, characters, and plot. So for example, if we take my uh, friend slash roommates, we're not friends anymore, never mind. If you take my roommate's uh, example with the magical story, really simple example, um, you have this magical world where all these people have like different talents and whatever and stuff like that. Your plot is just going to be this character learning about their style of magic. Okay, so maybe they're like a fire mage in a world where like fire mages are like looked down upon as like they're uh, impulsive. They don't have any control over themselves. The whole like plot revolves around like um, establishing yourself in this world where like people are prejudiced against you. You know, that's a that's like such a such a common plot that like lots of writers have done before, but that's okay because the focus is not the plot. You're not like bringing the the plot isn't like the central part of the book that you're trying to like show to the world. The central part is the magic system that you think is really cool. You just need something there to anchor onto. And maybe for your character, uh, you have someone who is kind of fiery, who has a really strong personality and plays into the stereotype of the fire mage a little bit but they also have like this edge of like emotional maturity about them where they're like oh 
they see like their friends in trouble a lot and they're always willing to help them out. They're like, they're always down to help people out no matter what. Um, and that's like their kind of their character arc. They're like balancing out their like impulsive, fiery nature against their like inner humanity and their ability to like empathize with people. You're already more interested in this now that I'm talking, now that I'm describing it like this, because you can see how like the pieces of the story start to interlock and fit together. And that's what I mean. You need all three to create a compelling story. You need a setting that's going to be an interesting world for people to inhabit. You need a plot um, that kind of is like the motion of the broader world or the motion of the characters. And of course, you need the characters. You need anchors. You need people who you can relate to who are going to do something interesting and human and compelling um, in your story. And next time you go and read a story, next time you watch a movie, next time you do anything, I want you to ask yourself about these three elements. Who are the characters? What's the plot? What's the setting? How do these elements interact with each other in order to make the story compelling? All right. Star Wars, Marvel movies, you name it. Anything that you consume that can be called a story has all three of these. All three of them are compelling and all of them interact in really interesting and unique ways. So go out into the world, watch your movies, read your stories, read your fan fiction, ask yourself these questions about your stories and you will have a much deeper appreciation for the craft of writing and I'll have done my job. I've been Autumn Chu um, and uh, apologies again for my very fiery personality. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe uh, for more like it, um, share it with your friends who think they're writers and to make fun of them, uh, but also so that they learn something from this. All right, catch you in the next one.